Hello everybody, welcome to the video. Uh, it's just going to be hopefully a short video on uh, the topic of picking. So today we'll cover some stuff on holding the pick, uh, you know, picking a pick, choosing a pick I should say that's, that's best for your playing. Um, you know, what's be basically going to work best for you uh, because I think when it comes down to it, the guitar pick is really the connection between, you know, you and your, your instrument. Um, you know, your, your fingers may get involved as well, but that's it's the same thing. Um, you know, there's a feel and you want to make that, in my opinion, um, as good as possible, really. Um, you don't want to have a bad feel when you're connected to your instrument. So, in my opinion, this is really the connection between... Um, you know what you're gonna play it doesn't matter so much what's going on here um, if the pickings off right if it's not syncopated it's still gonna sound sloppy so um, hopefully it can touch a few uh, notes on how to tighten that up and and get better at it if it's something that you feel is holding you back um, so my experience really with picks if I go back to when I started, I was probably 12, got my first guitar, um, and, you know, played pretty religiously through through high school and junior high school. Um, was really into, you know, the kind of the 80s shredders, the shrapnel guys. I really liked uh, Malmsteen, Vi, uh, you know, Satriani was a big one too. Um, and I think when I started out, I was probably using, like, you know, your standard... Uh, I think jazz two or three for, for quite a while. Um, you know, maybe the first year I was using a, just a standard Dunlop something or other, but, um, my teacher at the time, you know, he turned me on to the jazz, uh, two or three. Uh, you know, I was asking him, what, what do you like? You know, he was, you know, miles ahead of where I was at the time. So I was just kind of picking his brain and that's where I kind of started was, you know, your standard jazz three. I think I have one here in my kit little you know, pick box so this one here is the the Altex one um, I think I had the red ones to start um, and that you know that that seemed to get me by for the time I wasn't too you know advanced or anything I was still getting my chops up so after that I was into um, the, the basically this the, the bigger version which was the Jazz 3 XL and um, was quite into these George Dennis uh, they're like 1.3 millimeter uh, picks, uh, very similar to the to the Jazz 3 XL. Just had a better grip on it, and I could get a bulk of them for quite cheap. So I used that when I was when I was playing in my band and and stuff. Um, and then a few years later, really got into this uh, this Deva pick. Uh, this was the main pick I was using. Um, in my band gravitational distortion uh, so I probably was using this one for a good um, I'd say about five years right and just didn't really think I wasn't really thinking much about it it just it seemed to do the job and um, I felt I wasn't practicing as much technique at, at that time probably the the past eight eight years I was I was more so just just playing metal, right? Playing, playing live and, and working on just, um, just riffs. Um, and then when I was getting more into, you know, fast picking, trying to build my sequences back up and, and, you know, start taking practicing a little more serious again. Um, I found that pick just didn't do it for me whatsoever. I'm not sure if it was the, the shape of the, the edge, which we'll get, or the point, which we'll get to but um, I just felt everything was sloppy and it just, it wasn't working right. So went back to look at some other picks and really found that uh, this here, this is the Jazz 3 Stubby, or is it just, J yeah, something like that, Jazz Stubby. This thing's awesome. It's got, it's a three millimeter pick. It's got not a super sharp point, which I've also found on other picks to get in the way this just glides nicely right through the strings, right? So, um, you know, for sweet picking, it, it seems to work great. 
Um, and, and same with, uh, you know, playing stuff fast. And, uh, you know, really was about that pick for about two years. And I've, I've you know, kind of come back to these things, trying new gear and, and whatnot, see if things need to be changed. And um, found that, what is it? This is the Dimension Junior V pick. Uh, this is a great pick. We'll look at it a little bit in a sec, but, um, and found also, what is this? The chicken pick. This is a good one too. This is called the Badass. Badass three. It's a, this one's a two millimeter, but, um, these picks compared to your normal pick are just way better in terms of the design. Um, especially if you want to get into playing fast stuff, right. And, and, and have it really clean, articulate and be able to pull it off without, you know, getting stuck. Right. So I don't think the camera's going to pick this up, but you know, if you look at the um, the tip on this thing, it, it, you have to take my word for it. I don't think it's going to pick it up, but it's it's completely beveled. Um, there's a really nice point to it, and uh, you know, I think that's what you need when you're when you're playing, you know, fast and you want to sweep through everything, um, you know, efficiently, right? So uh, I'd, I'd say if you're having trouble with that, first you need to find a pick that's gonna work for your style of playing so um, I do a lot of like hybrid stuff you know I like a lot of these double stop kind of things so like with a pentatonic it might be like so there's a lot of there's a lot of um, picking and, and finger and um, you know with with without having I feel like a thick enough pick it just doesn't work for me whatsoever um, I recommend you know Something around the two to three millimeter uh, mark, I would say, is a good place to start. You don't really want, in my opinion, that um, you don't really want any resistance. You don't want your pick kind of catching on the string and, and, and stopping you when you're trying to just go through it. Um, and I think this is important too for like picking technique. So when you have a when you have like a normal pick, it just doesn't seem to to catch the string right. Um, I think if I can hold this up and kind of show you, you really want to just be, you know, just just on the top of the string. You don't need to be deep in here. There's no there's no need for that. It's going to pull the string right as you're as you're going through it. Um, and I guess I like to have just a slight angle so that the pick just kind of cuts a little easier. It doesn't have to be completely flat in my opinion. Um, just just a slight angle it might help a little bit. Um, I've seen some other videos uh, where they talk about all these different, you know, this angle, reverse slant, whatever. Really, I think it's just going to come down to uh, what's more comfortable for you. Um, I mean, you look at a lot of your favorite players, the best in the world, really. Uh, I'll name a few that come to mind that have just kind of not orthodox to everyone's got a different style. So you look at Marty Friedman, you look at... Um, Sean Lane, um, you look at Tozan Avasi, these guys all hold their pick either just way different or there's just slight, you know, inconsistencies and that's just where it gets personal, right? What What's going to be uh, most comfortable for you, right? But uh, I really believe in like economy of motion and, and taking out stuff that adds resistance, right? Um, so if you can essentially like cut through the string um, that's probably the best way to look at it, right? Is you don't have resistance, you're just kind of going through it. Um, so when you get into, we'll talk a bit about maybe some picking techniques to work on to help too. Um, when you work on that stuff, you're going to find when you're getting into like upstrokes, having a little bit of that angle might help too, right? Because you don't have as much resistance, you're cutting a little more on a, on a slight angle. But um, some of the some of the stuff I would work on um, is like three note to four note and then three note three note patterns. So just example, if I do um, a minor scale, right? I'm gonna do three notes and then I'm gonna do four notes and I'm gonna repeat that up just in octaves to make it to make it easy so it sound like. You know, you could speed it up as you go. 
But really what you want to be thinking about is, is making that uh, connection where, where your fingers are landing and the timing of um, this hand, right? If, if you feel like you're picking, maybe you're practicing is just not um, tight, you really got to think a little bit and get conscious of it and, and make that connection. As you're hitting each note with this hand, this has to be timed. So sometimes I'll think uh, really with this hand and this hand is so trained to, you know, whatever scale or something I'm running through that it's it's pretty much on autopilot. So if I go through that one, I'm thinking, you know, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, right? Um, I'm thinking about that, um, that note number or that those um those numbers right that picking number so and you can kind of speed it up from there once you get um a good handle on it slow right so even there a little sloppy but really um thinking about that connection right Um, and you know, some of these things about, you know, starting on certain strokes that, that can definitely help. Um, I think some of the problems, um, I've heard in other videos can be kind of mitigated, uh, really with, with bringing down this motion to a minimum. Uh, so even if I'm trying to, you know, do something where I'm coming back, um, the other way, you know, not, I think the word. I hear a lot is getting trapped. You don't have to necessarily push the pick beyond the string, right? You can pick and have this kind of motion where you're, where you're moving the way you want to go, right? You have to kind of be um, conscious of it um, when you're doing it, right? Um, so those are some things to work on. Um, and, you know, you can mix that in with, with the hybrid picking. So sometimes I'll do stuff like... Um, all fives up I'll go where I'm picking here and I'm sweeping here um, just a different way to play it really you could you could really just sweep it up and down but um, you know try getting other digits involved it, it becomes a lot of fun uh, there's a lot more stuff you can do a little easier, like, you know, string skipping. That little Paul Gilbert lick there. Right? Just grabbing it here. So, uh, in short, you know, this is a, it's an important tool for what you're doing on the guitar. And, uh, you know, it can even change the tone a bit. Notice with these thinner picks, you probably hear this a little more acoustically. They just have a little more of a plinky, thin tone, right? So um, the thicker picks I do find have a more, you know, even tone. And you can always back off your, your playing dynamics from there. So uh, I think that probably covers most of it for now. Uh, you know, any comments? criticisms, compliments, it's all welcome. Uh, appreciate you watching. Peace.